So you decided you want to join the military, did your time, and now you're ready to move on. Maybe you're looking to change industries and thought becoming an aircraft mechanic sounded interesting. Maybe you've been in an aviation specialty for six plus years and decided that you wanted to pursue it as a civilian. Or maybe you just want to add your AMP certificate to your resume while getting away from your unit for the last six months of your active duty contract. Whatever your reason for moving from the military to a civilian job in aviation, I hope you'll learn something today. If you've been here before, you may know from previous videos that I earned my Airframe and Power Plant certificate through military experience. If not, now you know. The FAA allows those with aviation-related occupational specialties to apply for their ability to test after they've been outside their tech school, advanced individual training, or whatever your branch happens to call your learning of your job for two and a half years actively working on aircraft at their unit. And again, throwing it back to past videos, you may remember that your occupational specialty might be a little too narrow to qualify you on more than one rating. You'll need to fill out a form 8610-2. Uh, it's fairly simple. I've got one up on the screen right now, plugging in the needed information for Private Joe Snuffy. If you have any questions about filling it out, just follow along with the clip that I've got running and uh, you should have no problems whatsoever. You'll also need to provide a letter from your commander stating that you worked on certain things and how long you worked on them. If you head down to the description box, I've got a link to a free template you can swap names, dates, and experience out on and pass along to your chain of command. It even includes the new Airman Certification Standards list of skills so you can prepare yourself for the testing. On top of that letter, you'll also need a copy of your DD-214, a valid photo ID, and records of all your training or maintenance if you can get them. Now once you have your 8610-2 filled out, your experience and paperwork gathered, you'll need to find the nearest Flight Standards District Office and schedule an interview with an aviation safety inspector. I've got up on screen right now the process of finding the nearest FISDO to you. The inspector will sit down either virtually or in person with you and ask knowledge questions across the general airframe and power plant categories just to kind of assess what your knowledge base is and whether or not he or she is willing to sign off on you testing for your airframe, your power plant, or both. Once the meeting is through, he'll sign your 8610-2 authorizing you to either test for your airframe, power plant, or both certificates. This 8610-2 does not expire. It does, however, have an 18-month shelf life from the date of your first written test to complete all remaining written, oral, and practical exams. If you don't finish your exams before that 18 months is up, you will need to get another 8610-2 Signed. Now that you have all these things signed, you're ready to decide on your path forward. Do you want to try and study and test on your own? Do you want to utilize the DoD Skillbridge program? What about getting the Veteran Readiness and Employment program to pay for your testing? Maybe you can use the Credentialing Assistance program to fund your testing. Or maybe your specific base has a special program that might be a great option too. You'll have to figure that one out on your own, though if you shoot me an email or a contact on my webpage, I generally have connections with a lot of those transition programs uh, across bases throughout the US and I can point you in the right direction. In interest of not having a 40 minute long video, we'll just have the DoD Skillbridge program up here in this video. Drop a like and a comment below to have a specific video made about other options. The Skillbridge program is a great catch-all because it literally catches every branch. There are locations all over the nation as you can see from the video I have on screen here. The greatest part is that if there's no slots available at the program near you, then the military will allow you to relocate and travel to another base where there is an available slot and you'll receive your BAH and BAS while on this training program because this training program is your place of duty for your last six months of your contract. Circling back to that last six months of your contract portion of what I just said, the Skillbridge program does have one major drawback. You have to start the program about three weeks from your six month window towards your ETS date. If the program you chose is full or doesn't have a start date, that will finish within 90 days of your ETS date, then you cannot enroll in the program and you will miss out. So if you're on the fence and you're within 24 months of your ETS date, start planning now. You might get written off as that guy who says, oh, I'll, I'll see you on the outside 24 months from the end of your contract, but you will be prepared and everyone else will be like, I'm so lost, I don't know what to do. Hopefully you learned a little something today and this helped you to make a decision. If you're interested in continuing your educational journey towards your AMP certificates, click the box to my left. Thanks for coming, see you later. Oh, GoPro, yeah. stop recording.